हेलो व्यूवर्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स एंड वी लेफ्ट आर वीडियो टू द पॉइंट दैट इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट हाउ न्यूरल नेटवर्क्स कैन बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड और कैन बी सिमुलेटेड इन द इन द फील्ड ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस to perform the functions uh, which humans uh, perform better than the conventional digital computers so uh, uh, the answer was artificial neural networks so in this video we will discuss the concept of artificial neural networks so let's go to the introduction part uh, like uh, conventional biological neural networks in artificial neural network we do have a number of processing elements in case of biological neural network we call them neurons and in case of artificial neural networks we call we can call them as artificial neurons and uh, perceptron as well you will see in the upcoming slides that we can also call them as perceptrons now these neurons or perceptrons or artificial neurons consist of input and output units Uh, which are used to uh, to learn the system or used for the learning process of the system and these input uh, input units are connected with weighted links so uh, generally the the procedure is that uh, we have an input associated with a weight and after its processing if the output is coming out to be the target output So if the actual output uh, after the processing of the given input and its weighted uh, and its weight if the actual output is coming out to be the uh, targeted output means the the output which was given in the uh, in the learning data then we call we can call that yes it is performing good and if the output if the actual output current output is not coming out to be equal to or similar to the targeted output or the output given in the specified or learning data then we need to update the input update the state of the input and in artificial neural network the signals travel independently on weighted channels and units can update their states parallelly so whatever i just told you that if in case if we are not getting the desired output then the the the, uh, the states can be updated in parallel and uh, of course as we have discussed in the biological neural networks that uh, they work in parallel and the digital computers work in serial so how would it be possible to perform the functions of neural networks using a conventional digital computer so yes we can do a simulation of that and in case of simulation it would be possible to perform the functioning of Uh, neural networks through artificial neural networks so now we are coming to the uh, concept of a processing element in neural network which is called as artificial neuron or perceptron so you can see in this diagram that we have a set of inputs x1 x2 x3 f2 xn and uh, these inputs are received uh, along with their associated weights which are specified as w1 with x1 w2 with x2 and similarly wn with xn so now the question arises what does these uh, what do these weights uh, specify or signify so generally these weights uh, specify that how important this input is relative to the other inputs Uh, now let me consider an example suppose uh, suppose we uh, suppose i have i'm uh, i have to plan uh, to play a game of cricket on some day then there must be some number of uh, aspects or parameters which i have to consider means how's the weather whether it is uh, whether it is uh, uh, sunny or it is cloudy or it is hot or humid like that so as per my choice i have to specify some weight over the weather weather input 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इट इज टू टू सनी और टू हॉट देन आई वुड प्रीफर नॉट टू गो और आई वुड आई वुड स्पेसिफाई आई वुड स्पेसिफाई दैट नो इट इज़ नॉट गुड टू प्ले क्रिकेट इन दिस वेदर सो इन इन सच केस देर मस्ट बी पर्टिकुलर इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ वेदर इन माई परस्पेक्टिव अदर थिंग इज do i have uh, a number of companions with me who would uh, go to play so the num- the number of companions uh, will also be an important aspect so i would specify uh, some weight over this and put number of companions which number of players which will go with me to play the game of cricket so similarly we have a number of inputs and uh, uh, along uh, so along each input we have an associated weight so <clears throat> you can see over here we have uh, to add all the weighted inputs as you can see in the equation then xw which represents that weighted input x is the input set of input and w specifies the weight so we can collectively call it as weighted input and it is the summation from i is equal to 1 to n xi wi means all the input are multiplied with their weights respective weights and then add it up then we can call it as weighted input then we have another input over here which is called as a bias input now uh, if you if you search the concept of bias over the internet or in the books then you will have a large number of answers or debates over this particular concepts means what does bias represent why is it used so i will try to quote a number of possible answers means why do we use bias uh, first one which is the most important one is that it is actually the the parameter or the attribute uh, which is used to train the data at different perspectives means that if i do not have the bias input then all my learning process will be trained over the uh, over the origin only means if we have an xy plane xy axis then all my data without the bias will be trained uh, with respect to the origin but in real it is not the scenario that i would like to train my data through origin only i want my data to be trained at at different levels at different scenarios so that's why we have a bias input which like weights uh, can also be updated uh, as we progress through the learning process so that is the uh, one answer to the specification or representation of bias input <coughs> other uh, other answer regarding bias is that it may be considered as an error which always we have uh, whatever whatever activity we generally perform we must have some some consideration for error and this bias input represents that error another answer is that it specify how difficult or how easy is to get a desired input so we have a number of uh, answers which of course can be debatable uh, regarding this bias but uh, the best to me which i think is the most appropriate is that the first one that it specifies that our data our learning data or our system or, or the perceptron should learn or should be trained uh, across different part of the plane not only through the origin okay so now uh, after the summation of uh, inputs along with their weights we have to add the bias with them in the form of b then you can see in the second equation that we have xwb as the weighted biased input and which is the previous output plus the bias sum of previous output and bias now after getting this input weighted biased input we apply an activation function over it and get the actual output actual output now you have to uh, understand this fact that the actual output is the output coming out of the activation function it may or may not be equal to the target output 
means the output which we uh, exactly want our system to uh, to get means which uh, which uh, which matches which matches with the uh, with the output in the learning data so uh, after the application of activation function we get the actual output and then we have to check whether this actual output is matching or not with the desired or targeted output now uh, we have to discuss what is an activation function and what can be the different types of activation functions we can have in case of neural networks so the two most common activation functions which are preliminarily or primarily used or in the simple applications we can say are sine function and step function uh, now we have to discuss these two in a bit detail <clears throat> so this is the sine function and you can you can see in the diagram as well if the weighted biased input is greater than zero then the actual output represented by y a is one or uh, else the weighted out uh, else the output is actual output is zero <clears throat> so you can see in the equation as well that if uh, x w v is greater than 0 then the output that is y a is 1 and 0 otherwise so this is the uh, simple sine function and of course uh, you can you can uh, change this function a bit means uh, i have considered two two values that is 1 and 0 once one means yes uh, it is at higher state or activated state zero means inactivated state you can say so instead of zero you can choose minus one as well or some other uh, you can say boolean va variable boolean value you can you can choose in place of zero and one as well now we come to the uh, next function which is a step function step function is nothing but uh, an advanced version or you can say the uh, second form of uh, sine function where we have a threshold value so in sine function as you can see in this in this diagram uh, we had the condition if x b the x w b that is weighted by input if it is greater than zero but in case of a step function instead of zero we have t that is threshold value so we have some threshold value so if the weighted biased input is greater than t then we have uh, our activation function or the output in the activated state that is equal to 1 else in other rest of the conditions it would be 0. So now it is I think quite a simple uh, representation of the two functions and now after, after the uh, consideration of these two functions i hope you people may uh, understand the limitation of the perceptron or or this uh, artificial neuron and what is it if if you can see we are able to represent our actual output in the boolean form only either 0 or 1 or instead of 0 1 if you want to choose some other value but it would be uh, in the uh, in the boolean data type only means either 0 either 1 either minus 1 or 1 like that so uh, how does it lead to the limitation of uh, artificial neuron or perceptron that with the help of this we can only represent the linearly separable problems means this perceptron can only be applicable to linearly separable problems but not be applicable to non-linearly separable problem so in, in the in the figure you can see the above two the above two figures represent a linearly separable problem and the uh, and the diagrams specified below two diagrams are representing the non-linearly -linear, separable problems and in, in in the example of linearly separable we can have the and operation or operation not operation and the counterpart is um, x or which is considered under the category of non-linearly separable 
so now in the real world if we want to quote an example of linearly separable then suppose if we if we want to uh, if we want to distinguish or if, if we want to classify uh, if something for example like if if we want to uh, among the uh, among the uh, set of objects if we want to classify them into the uh, you can say electrical appliances or furniture suppose we have a number of objects in a house number of uh, items in the house and if we want to classify them into electrical appliances and furniture then simply we can we can we can classify them uh, those items which are driven over the electrical connections or power would be classified as uh, electrical appliances and the uh, the items like table bed chairs uh, almiras uh, these type of items would be classified under the category of uh, furnitures so these these objects are uh, easily put at the either side of a line of a straight line and so that we can classify them into uh, linearly separable objects so but the other cases uh, where we cannot specify whether a particular object should be considered in this class or that class so these type of examples are considered as uh, non no, not linearly separable objects or problems so uh, in the next video uh, we will stop today up to this uh, at this point only so in the next video we will discuss how we can how we can train our perceptron to perform and operation okay so hope you people understand this and if you have any doubt or problems then please let me know in the comment section so that i can respond accordingly thank you